So what does all this mean? What's the importance of this? What are the lessons to be learned from chaotic dynamics? Well, I should say that I don't think there's a simple or single answer for this. There um, isn't uniform agreement on how important chaos is or what's important about it. And for sure, I think there are different lessons or implications for chaos in different areas of science and social science and in life. So I'm not going to have a simple conclusion here. So instead, let me um, make a few more comments and um, <clears throat> give a couple more ways for thinking of things. And I want to start by sort of inverting how I've been talking about things so far, which is um, to begin with an equation and then see what it can do. And of course, that's not really how life works. Um, we don't get handed equations, we get handed life, and, and sometimes we turn life into data. So let's imagine going in the other direction. So suppose we had um, data. Maybe this is data for population of rabbits on an island. Or you know, who, who knows, it could, could be anything. But I'll talk about the rabbits. And these are 40 years of um, data, and we can see that the population settles into a two-year cycle very quickly and that appears to be stable. And maybe, um, you know, some year the rabbits, something happens to the rabbits, there are a, a bunch more, a bunch less, we would see it returning to this behavior. And we could tell ourselves um, a fairly simple story about why this is the way it is. Um, some years, uh, the, the, when there are a lot of rabbits, they eat all the grass. The next year, there isn't so much grass. The rabbits go hungry. The population decreases. The, ra the, the grass comes back. And we cycle around. OK. So then imagine on another island, a very similar island, we um, also had some data, result of observations. And it looked like this. And so here, we see the rabid population jumping all over. It doesn't appear to be regular. It almost crashes. I mean, almost, they almost all die off, grow fast, almost die off again. And how might we, what might we respond to this? Well, what would we do with, with this data? Well, one thing I think that would be natural to say is, hey, who's messing with the rabbits? Right? We learned from this that rabbits left alone will do their own thing and, and stabilize, go into this nice cycle. So if we saw some behavior like this, it would be logical to think that um, somebody was messing with the rabbits. Something, there must be some external influence crazy weather or random bands of uh, gangs of poachers or, you know, who knows, who knows what, whatever, you know, bad things to rabbits, people who do bad things to rabbits are, are coming by. Something is happening to them. But what we've learned in this unit is that we can get random looking irregular behavior like this without any external influence. In fact, the exact same process, just changing one little growth parameter by a pretty small amount, can give rise to both of these situations. So I think experimentally, one might look at these two and think, oh, I have to think about these sorts of phenomena in the world very differently. That the world is made up of things that are orderly and made up of things that are random, and those are separate. They might get mixed together, but they're separate things. And I would need a different type of explanation for this than I would for that. And that's a reasonable thing. But chaos says, no, that's actually not true. That you can get disorder from an orderly system, deterministic randomness. That randomness and order aren't um, these completely separate things that need to be, we need to think of in a completely different way. That in a sense, they're um, maybe two sides of the same coin. So this suggests that um, randomness and order are that the relationship between them is a little more subtle than one might have thought. They're not um, sort of complete opposites that need to be thought of completely differently. Here's another way to um, maybe think about this. So in the sort of pre-chaos, pre-chaotic dynamics view of things, we might be faced with some choices for how we think about the world or how we think about a particular phenomena. And one choice would be the system follows rules. We have some rule-based system. And the presumption, and it's a logical one, would be that if something's following rules, it would be orderly. And then the other choice we have is that systems behave randomly. And when we see randomness, 
we wouldn't explain that by thinking about rules. We'd say, well, that's due to chance, stochasticity, or some large um, amount of external influences. So we ha would have these two choices, and they're very different sorts of ways of thinking about things or different explanatory frameworks. So if we saw right, something like this, we'll say, aha, it must be following a rule, and that's why we see orderliness, because rules are orderly, and rules give orderly rules give rise to orderly behavior. And if we saw this, we would say, aha, the system's behaving randomly. It's not settling down. It's not cycling. So these rabbits, whatever they're doing, um, they're not following a rule. It's due to chance. Maybe the rabbits behave randomly. There's some inherent stochasticity in the, in the affairs of rabbits, or there's external influences that are acting irregularly and at random that are, that's making this happen. But what chaos in dynamical systems says is that that's not necessarily the case. So we could have a system could follow rules, but it doesn't have to be orderly. Um, it could then, so you could have a rule-based system that behaves randomly. So um, we might think rules imply order. We've seen that's not the case. The logistic equation with R equals 4 can produce randomness. So rather than this binary choice, um, we have new ways of explaining um, random or apparently random behavior. We could have a, a system following a, a chaotic rule or a chaotic function. So I think this is an important realization for, um, I would think, almost any area of science. So if you see something like this, it doesn't automatically mean rulelessness or stochasticity. It could, but it doesn't have to. There are other ways that we can explain phenomena like this. So what does chaos and the butterfly effect have to say about this idea of Laplacian determinism? Well, I think that's a really difficult question. There are a lot of competing ideas, and there certainly isn't universal agreement on this. At one level, maybe one of the central premises of Laplacian determinism, or at least this Newtonian worldview, um, persists and endures. So the dynamical systems we've been studying in this view, the world is still one in a sense of cause and effect. The world is um, following rules. Now those rules, however, don't lead to order or predictability. So that's sort of the twist that uh, chaos and sensitive dependence on initial conditions um, gives us. In order to um, do long-term prediction of a chaotic system, let alone come close to Laplace's demon, one would need to know um, the initial conditions of whatever it is we're studying to a degree of precision that's not just impractical, but I think is impossible. So um, I don't know if it spells the end of Laplacian determinism, but it certainly requires us to reconsider those notions a lot. Some people argue that the um, phenomena of sensitive dependence on initial conditions sort of frees us from the shackles of determinism and it gives a place for free will to exist again. Personally, I'm not so sure. Maybe it frees us from the shackles of determinism, sort of, but it's unclear to me how the butterfly effect, which is in a sense unpredictable, it's like shuffling already well-shuffled decks of cards and extra time to change your luck. Um, so I don't know how the butterfly effect leaves room for free will, but I'm not sure. I don't really know how to think about free will, as I've said before. So this brings us to the end of Unit 3. This was a long unit, longer than I actually intended it to be, but we've covered a lot of ground, and we've now learned about the core phenomena of chaos, and it, the, the key element of that is sensitive dependence on initial conditions or the butterfly effect. We'll explore further and think more about the consequences of all of this and other phenomena from dynamical systems in the next several units. See you next week in Unit 4.